I'd like to ask everyone a question. Are there actually any bad twin stick shooters? I mean seriously. If you go back far enough in gaming history, I know we can find a couple, but the last few years have been really good to shoot at aficionados and I'm starting to feel like I'm dreaming. I'm guessing Assault Android Cactus is going to keep me right in La La Land then, because it is nothing short of brilliant. Three days ago, the Genki Star sent a garbled distress message for unknown reasons, and Junior Constable Cactus is sent to investigate. After an, uh, improvised landing, she learns that the four section lords in charge of the robot workforce aboard the ship have gone haywire, and now, so have the robots. Now, the only personnel available to take him down is a small group of androids with lots of guns. As excuse plots for large-scale mayhem go, this one is actually pretty good, if a bit by the numbers, and it's all because of the personalities of both the heroines and the villains they fight. You've got your headstrong cop, deadpan snarker logistics tech, kind medic, and this girl. I'm sorry, Coral, you are powerful with your shotgun and your stasis field, but I can't really place you. Everyone gets different dialogue with the section lords, and you even come to understand them as individuals, and that's something I wasn't expecting. The campaign completes in a couple of hours with a potential sequel hook, and what you end up left with is a need to see more and maybe step your game up in order to climb the online leaderboards. Because at its heart, Assault Android Cactus is all about that score attack. Control of all the androids is the same. Moving and aiming is performed with the analog sticks, you fire your selected weapon with the right trigger, and switch between guns with the left trigger. Throughout the game's 25 arena-based levels, enemy robots attack in predetermined waves of weak popcorn fodder and strong bullet sponges, requiring smart usage of your big gun. And to prevent over-reliance on that thing, there's a heat meter that needs to cool down while you soften up foes using your main cannon. Destroyed bots routinely drop items that give you extra firepower, temporarily shut them down, and drastically increase your movement speed, which is normally painfully slow. All of this ensures that more of them die faster, building a chain that boosts your score and and contributes to the letter grade you get at the end of every stage. And those two minutes are fun. Dodging enemy fire while blasting them into oblivion and using their energy to power up your own gun just feels good, with no downtime and, thankfully, scenarios that don't feel cheap. At least until the end. The difficulty curve becomes really damn steep, and until you have things memorized, you'll be going down a lot. At least you don't immediately die when this happens, since the actual game over state is brought about by not maintaining a charge on your battery. So yeah, everything is pretty balanced, and the high skill ceiling ensures anyone willing to spend the time learning the game will continue climbing that ladder. The lack of a dash mechanic or an ability to choose your combination of guns is, in my opinion, ridiculous, but those things would break the game balance and probably make scoring much easier. What makes omissions like these strange, however, is the presence of the EX options menu where you can swap out your big gun for a stronger version of your main one or play with AI teammates. Not placing more crazy options there just seems like a lost opportunity. Still, just like with the efforts to balance gameplay, plenty of time seems to have gone into making this game look and play great, though some shortcuts appear to have been taken. The four main androids have very similar frame and facial models, however, their visual designs are so radically different otherwise, you'd barely notice. This also goes for enemies, and their attack functions even differ. Automatons looking the same can easily be explained away in-universe, but the background noticeably didn't scroll in the second level. So was that an oversight or a deliberate choice to ensure the game generally ran at a smooth frame rate? Because it does, even with tons of enemies and effects on screen. I mean, look at this! The sound effects, voice work, and music also layer nicely in an effort to be a treat to the ears, though I'm not a fan of hearing my characters chatter through my PS4 controller, and there seemed to be no way to turn that off. Obviously, this isn't a problem on PC. In any case, minor flaws aside, Assault Android Cactus is an outstanding arcade shooter that deserves a play. This game oozes style with wonderful attention to detail visually and a sweet sound package that doesn't make your ears bleed. Its painstaking level design, enemy placement, and assortment of modes should also keep those chasing high scores happy, though the short length of the campaign and hell climb difficulty may turn away a more casual audience. I only wish I'd paid attention to the game sooner. It's definitely worth the asking price, so there won't be any sting from getting your hands on this cactus.